Hey guys, Michael23B here, and today I am here to show you my new 8-bit parallel serial transceiver. Now what I mean by that is I am actually transferring 8 bits of binary data back and forth between these two transceivers. And what I mean by parallel serial, as I explained in the last video, is I am sending all the data over these two tripwire lines here. So I'm actually alternating the bits over both of them so that 4 bits of data are sent over this tripwire line and 4 bits of data are sent over this tripwire line. Now before I get too much into this transceiver, I first want to give credit to iPhoenix on the Chematech server. Uh, he actually designed most of this build and he compacted it uh, quite a bit, so it is much better than our previous design. So before I get too much into the demonstration, let's first go to our transceivers from the previous video. Alright, so this is where we left off with our previous transceivers, and as you can see, it's not very compact, uh, the bits aren't right next to each other, uh, and it's very messy down here, so it's not really tileable. You can't stack a bunch of bits uh, directly next to each other. So it's pretty messy. It was good at the time, but we have actually come a long way since then. So let's move on to our new design. And as you can see here, this is iPhoenix's first design for his 4-bit transceiver. It's completely tileable, and it's very compact, so I can actually send uh, all the bits over those uh, repeaters. Now I get 5 bits because I get 1 wake-up bit and 4 of the data bits. Uh, now this is just a concept, so let's move on from that. So this is iPhoenix's design for his 8-bit transceiver, and we've actually got two identical ones uh, across this tripwire line here. So this is just completely rotated 180 around the x-axis, so both of them are completely identical. Um, and we've got a clear button here, you can clear it, um, and you can put bits in. And I could send that over. Both of them have a transmitter and a receiver that's completely identical and we get those bits there. Now, I've actually changed the design a little bit so that these two transceivers can be straight across from each other, and what that means is that one of them is sending and receiving on the right side, and the other one is sending and receiving on the left side. So the redstone's a little bit different, but all the functionality is exactly the same. So now that we've got all that down, let's go to my final design, which is over here. So this is the final design. I have changed all the inputs so that they are note blocks instead of buttons. We've got our clear button, a send button, and we've got all the binary uh, digits along here. Uh, and the way the note blocks work is they're actually using observers to detect when someone hits them, and they're sending a 1-bit pulse into these pistons, which changes the data bit. So before we get into that, let's show you a demonstration. So I could put whatever I want into here. Let's put in uh, 169, for example, and I'll transmit it over to that one. And you see we get 10101001, which is the equivalent of 169 in decimal. Um, so we can actually hit the clear button as well, and it clears it very fast. And we can also clear the other side by sending a bunch of zeros. So you can see it clears there, and we should get nothing else. Um, now I can put in whatever number else I like. I can just tap a bunch of random ones if I want. And we can send that back from this one and we should get 101 and a 1 at the end. So there we go. All right, now the send button is a little more complicated, but basically what we're doing is we are sending a pulse through this observer here, uh, and this goes down into this redstone line, which is our wake up bit, uh, and that lets the other transceiver know that data is coming. Now what we're also doing is we're sending a signal through these repeaters here, uh, and that starts the data transfer once we get a pulse to this observer here. Uh, now the third thing we're also doing is we are sending a redstone line up to here, uh, and that deactivates this redstone torch for a little while, uh, and that deactivates the receiver so that we're not receiving the bits that we're transferring. Alright, and as I was explaining earlier, we've got our line of observers here, and each one is actually five ticks apart, so we've got a five tick delay between this one and this one, and so on. And depending on if it's an air block or a regular block, that represents a 1 or a 0 in our data. So each one of these, if there is a block, it sends a pulse to this redstone line, and this redstone line goes out to the transmitter. Uh, now what we've also got here is our piston, which uh, is our splitter. So this piston decides if a pulse gets sent down to the bottom one, uh, to this line, or if this piston is pushed out, it gets sent to this one. So that's our splitter. 
uh, that de that determines uh, whether the data is sent over this line or this line. And as I was explaining here, we have our observers, which are five ticks apart, sending out to the transmitter. Uh, but this is probably very confusing to look at. It's just a huge chunk of observers. So let me explain in a bit simpler terms. So I have a demonstration here with all of these observers. Each one of these is facing out to send a pulse to the redstone line. Uh, but if I just hit a block here, we just get one tick. Um, now what we want is to have a five tick delay between each of these observers. So how that is accomplished is basically just a snake of observers. So if I do one observer here, we get one tick delay, two, three, four, and five. So that represents a five tick delay between this observer uh, and this observer. Now if this is air, then no tick will be sent. Uh, but if it's a block, then that's a tick and that represents our data. So if I just continue that, that's one two, three, four, and five. That's a five tick delay between this one and this one. Uh, and I can just continue that as long as I want. It's just a big snake of observers. It looks very confusing uh, when it's all built, but when you're building it, it's very simple. It's just making a five tick delay between each of them. And now that we've got it all built, I can show you we actually get eight ticks to the redstone line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Each five ticks apart. All right, and now that the sender is all explained, hopefully not too confusingly, uh, let's get into the receiver. So when we get received bits from the other transceiver, it goes into this line here, and these pistons push out to send a one tick pulse through these observers. And if we are receiving, that means if this piston is pushed out, that goes down into this redstone line, and the first thing that happens is we send a pulse through here, and that sends a clearing signal to the whole line so that all the bits get uh, reset to zero. Uh, and the other line, what that line does is it gets sent to this piston here, and that is our bits which are getting sent into the receiver. So uh, each time this piston pushes, we get a tick into the observer, uh, and that just sends through another uh, snake of observers, which are five ticks apart. And once it gets sent through all of those observers, it gets sent into this redstone line here. And this goes all the way back, all the way over to here. And basically what that does is it pushes all these pistons out. And once it pushes those pistons out, then uh, these observers here will be able to send our data bits up to the line of torches there. And uh, depending on if these pistons are pushed out, uh, depending on which ones are pushed out, that will determine uh, which observers send up to the data and that will be our accurate data uh, sent up to the line. And that's just about it. All right, now hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I've just got some final notes here. Now this tripwire is actually 40 blocks long, so if you wanted to send a signal over 40 blocks, you could. And you can also delete the sea lanterns. They're not really necessary. You can have the tripwire suspended in the air. Uh, I just used them to show off the tripwire. And if you want to send a signal over 40 blocks with the tripwire, you could also use this tripwire repeater here. So the tripwire comes into here, it sends a two tick pulse to the pistons, and that tells the next armor stand to send a signal to the next tripwire. And each one of these tripwire repeaters could be 40 blocks apart. Um, just as long as everything is within render distance, the whole transceiver should work. And that's it guys, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. I'll also have a schematic in the downloads down in the YouTube description. So that's it for me guys, thank you for watching, bye bye.